I'm Nate Terrio, and today we're going to see what facial hairstyle makes you more attractive. Last November, I made a video called The History of the Beard. If you haven't watched it yet, you can check it out right after you're done with this one. The reason I bring up the History of the Beard episode is because the project's main focus was on the origins of the beard. However, throughout the video, I glanced at a few subtopics, specifically the question, do beards and facial hair make you more attractive? We touched upon that question very briefly, but apparently you all wanted to know a whole lot more. In this video, I'll address which facial hairstyles make you more attractive by utilizing past studies as well as my own personal opinion. Let's get going. What facial hairstyle makes you the most attractive? That's quite a broad and subjective question. It's like going to see your favorite stand-up comedian with your girlfriend who really isn't that into it. You're watching the show and laughing hysterically the entire time. On the car ride home, you ask her, hey babe, what did you think of the show? And she says, I found it sophomoric, idiotic, and not funny in the slightest. This is where the opinion portion of the answer comes into play. People like different things. Some people like beards, some people like stubble, and some people don't watch Game of Thrones. All of these things are very well within your own control. However, there are also factors outside of your control to consider. One of the biggest being your genetics. If you were lucky enough to win the genetic lottery, you may have been blessed with a jawline that could cut through steel like a young Johnny Depp or Brad Pitt. But more likely than not, you didn't win the jackpot of genetic jawlines. And you're much closer to being cut from the mold of a Jonah Hill or Michael Moore than you may have hoped. Have you heard of the scale before? No. Not those scales. I'm talking about the classic 1 through 10 scale that's been the standard rating system for decades now. Sure, it's a bit judgmental and vain, but you're lying to yourself if you've never rated another human being based on their looks alone. Take Ariana Grande, Selena Gomez, or a 2007 Jessica Alba, for example. All three are flirting with near-perfect scale scores here. I'm talking 9.9s. I don't give out 10s because I believe there's always room for an improvement. But hey, I'm a heterosexual male who's 100% comfortable with my own sexuality and have zero issues admitting if another man is flirting with a 10 as well. Twain, The Rock, Johnson, Zac Efron, and Ryan Gosling, I mean, come on. Now, before you butcher me on being judgmental, can I at least finish the empirical evidence portion of the video? Then you can butcher me. One of the studies we'll be referring to today was essentially Tinder-esque with its ratings. Reactions and judgments based purely off of photos alone. But hey, there are definitely worse things in life than swiping left all day. The study was conducted on both men and women. The participants were shown photographs of men who were clean-shaven, lightly or heavily stubbled, and fully bearded. The study quantified men's and women's judgments into four categories. Attractiveness, health, masculinity, and parenting abilities. In the category of attractiveness, female participants in studies rated heavy stubble as the most attractive look. Men equally enjoyed the appearance of heavy stubble while also favoring a full beard. The winner of health results were a tad bit different. This time, the winner was the full beard. Both men and women indicated that men who have a full beard appear to be healthier than those without any type of facial hair. According to the study, the perception of a man's masculinity increases with the amount of facial hair that he has. So, if you want to be seen as a highly masculine individual, you should consider cultivating a full beard. Additionally, it is interesting to note that a heterosexual woman's interest in masculine looking men becomes more pronounced during the ovulation portion of her fertility cycle. In other words, if you and your female spouse or partner have been trying to conceive or if Bay just ain't putting out, it could be beneficial to grow your facial hair. Finally, in the category of best parenting skills, it was the full beard taking home the gold again, with both genders ascribing to men who maintain a full beard. A final look at this study concluded that men who are clean shaven or who have a light amount of stubble were rated as being the least attractive by both men and women. But these are just the facts from one study. It doesn't mean that if you don't have some sort of facial hair or a full beard that you're a bad person. It just means that you're an unattractive, unhealthy, unmasculine, poor parent. There are worse things in life to be. I just can't think of any right now. But what if you run into someone who thinks that facial hair and beards are not functional? You educate them. 
There are also scientifically proven health benefits associated with having facial hair. According to researchers from the University of Southern Queensland, facial hairstyles like a full beard or mustache are able to block up to 95% of the sun's harmful UV rays, thus reducing your risk of contracting skin cancer. It's also been proven that a beard can help you look younger by providing protection to your body's natural moisturizing oils from being dried by the sun or wind. Facial hair, specifically a beard or large mustache, can help prevent allergy and asthma attacks. Mustaches that reach the nasal area may stop allergens like dust and pollen from going up the nose and being inhaled by the lungs. Have you ever seen Burt Reynolds sneeze? Yeah, me either. While researching for this video, I thought it would be a good idea to take it one level deeper. So we came up with one more category. Does having a beard make you better at sports? Study case, NBA basketball. Houston Rockets superstar point guard shooting guard, James Harden. Harden was drafted back in 2009 with the third overall pick by the Oklahoma City Thunder. Here's a photo of him on draft night. Notice the very heavy stubble, foreshadowing how great of a beard this man could have. But let's dive even deeper. Three of the biggest statistical categories a player is rated on are points per game, rebounds per game, and assists per game. Now, there are way more in-depth analytics than those, but we'll save them for a different day. Let's take a look at Harden's averages in these three statistical categories pre-full beard during his first three years in the league. In 220 regular season games played, Harden averaged 12.7 points per game, 3.4 rebounds per game, and 2.5 assists per game. But let's see what happens to those numbers when James Harden stopped being James Harden and became simply known as the beard. In the season since he grew out his full beard, Harden averaged 27.4 points per game, 5.9 rebounds per game, and 7.6 assists per game. Now, I know some of you may be saying those astronomical leaps in his statistics are from his hard work ethic or increase in playing time with less star power around him, or even due to new league rules that promote offense in the NBA. To which I say, give me a break. It's because of his beard, that's it. So, what does science tell us about facial hair? According to the facts, it has many health benefits, including improving your immune system, aging process, and can lower your chances of UV radiation. On top of all that, you will be perceived as being more masculine, being a better parent, and in one super focused extreme case, become one of the best basketball players on the entire planet. That's about all the time I have today. I'm Nate Terrio, and I will see you next time. If you haven't already, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell button to never miss a new video. Help us hit a thousand subscribers before No Shave November ends. What did you like about this video? What could we do better? Let us know in the comments below.